All right, so for applying functions across um, margins of a matrix or later an array or data frame, we get to one of my favorite and most often used functions in R. Um, I do have a favorite function in R, believe it or not, um, just because this is so practical and has simplified so many problems for me that um, when I was a new R programmer seemed um, like difficult things to do. And this really simplifies your programming so much. So pay attention to this part. The apply function will apply any function. It can be a user defined function that we'll learn how to do later in the course or something already programmed in R. And it'll apply it across some kind of margin of your matrix or your array or your data frame. So the syntax looks like this. It's uh, apply as a function. So of course you have your arguments of the function in here. X is a matrix array or data frame. Margin just tells you how should I apply the margin, the function, across the rows, across the columns, or across the rows and columns. And then you have to name the function to be applied. And then if there are options within the functions, you can list them in that dot, dot, dot. Okay, so for example, here we have a matrix. One, two, three, four, five, six, on up to 12. If we use apply x, one, so one means across rows, sum, we get 22, 26, 30. So let's think back. What does that mean? Well, let's add up these. So one across row number one. One plus four plus seven plus 10, we get 22. Two plus five plus eight plus 11, you get 26 and so forth. Last row, row three, you get 30. If we simply change the margin from one to two, that's telling us now we're gonna sum across columns. So now we'll sum this way. So we should get, um, oh, and we're not summing, sorry. We have the mean. So we should get the mean of the set of numbers. So that's six divided by three, which is two, 15 divided by three, which is 15 and so on. So this is a simple use of the apply function. There's actually a lot more sophisticated uses you can make. So for example, if we're gonna be simulating some data, we can use the apply function is really, really great as a simulation tool, and we'll get to simulation later in the course. So let's say we wanna simulate n equal 10 observations where the event times t follow an exponential distribution with a mean of lambda equal 0.25, okay? You may or may not be as familiar with this model as everybody in the class, but that's okay. We're gonna have some censoring times that are uniformly distributed from zero to one. So then the observed data is gonna be the minimum of whatever time is generated using the exponential distribution model with mean 0.25 or the censoring time. So it's gonna be the minimum of those two. And delta is going to be an indicator function that tells me when t is smaller than the censoring time. So let's set up our parameters here. N is the sample size. We're gonna generate some exponential variables. I'll go over these, these um, random variable operators um, in a moment, but all this means is R stands for random, and R stands for random here as well. And this is saying we're generating data from an exponential distribution. Notice the parameters put in as four. Well, that's one over 0.25 because the mean is 0.25, then the rate is one over lambda. And so we get one over 0.25. And then unif, there's no parameters given because the default is zero to one. And so we're just gonna generate 10 exponential, 10 uniform. And so we have our event data and our sensor data. And then we need to apply, or, sorry, I should say, let's start here. We're gonna columnbind. So let's remember what columnbind does. At cbind function, it will, um, make a 10 by two matrix here, because we have 10 observations in sensor, 10 observations in event. So now we have a matrix that is 10 by one, and we're gonna apply across the rows the minimum. Okay, so that is just doing this part. Okay, because we're gonna have two observations, one sensor, one event in each row, and we wanna find them the apply. Otherwise, we would have had to create a new random variable minimum, which would have taken the minimum of each observation and looped through it, maybe using a uh, for loop. And we all wanna do it that way. This would be far more efficient, okay? And then index is gonna give us um, 
the index which, remember the which function gives us the index of the variable with a particular um, um, characteristic, in this case the minimum. And so it's going to give us that index and then we take minus 1 because um, this is going to create the correct index to start from baseline. And so finally then we get to where we're going to combine the event, the sensor time, um, the time that is the minimum of those two variables as well as the index. And let me pull this down a little bit. And then we get our data that it's going to be just the time in the index because the time in the index, it's hard to see that last part because my toolbar is at the bottom. But um, the time in the index are really these two variables are the two things we want to keep. And it's the final simulated data set. We don't actually want to keep the event and sensor data because the time is the minimum and index is the index associated with that time. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit, let me check, about generalizing both vectors and matrices to an array. So we've talked about vectors, which is just a typically a column vector in R, um, and then we generalize that to matrices. Now we're going to talk about an m-dimensional generalization of either of those structures, which is an array. To declare an array, we do it much like we declared a um, matrix. Um, this just puts NAs by default. Of course, you can enter data just like we did with the matrix. Then we can define the dimension of that array. And then we can also name our dimensions. Okay, so data is just going to give us that information that will become those elements. If we do not have enough elements to fill the matrix, then they get recycled. We'll, we'll see what that looks like in just a moment. And then again, the dimension and then the dimension names. Um, values are going to be entered by column just like as in matrices, which is by default in matrices except remember if you use the by row equal true then it would be entered by row. Like both vectors and matrices when your arrays are used in an expression the operations are performed element by element. It's just that now it's a um, higher dimensional um, generalization of those types of structures. And then also like vectors and matrices, the elements of your array must all be of the same type. So we need to have either all numeric, all character, or all logical, or if we have something else entirely. So let's look at a simple, easier to begin with array. So here we have our array. Here's our elements. Okay, so it's the values 1 through 12. This is going to be a 2 by 3 by 2 array. So notice that requires we have 12 elements, hence the sequence 1 to 12 will work here, and no recycling. Then we're going to set our dimensions. So notice the dimensions get set by a column vector and reflect exactly the dimensions that we've described here. Then we can give the dim names. It's going to use a list. We haven't talked about list structures yet, but for right now, just know that a list will combine multiple um, other types of structures into one um, list <laughs> or one object. Um, so we have the first A, B, which names the row dim dimension names. So notice A, B is here and here. Then we have the X, Y, Z, which names the column. So notice X, Y, Z. XYZ. Then we have the N and M, which goes with that last dimension, which defines third, N and M. So let's see how the data was entered. We went by column, if you recall, because arrays enter elements by column. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. Notice we can um, see that this is a three-dimensional array because there's a comma, so there's an element here, then a comma, and another element here, and then a comma and another element here. So we could actually pick out what would be the a comma x comma n. Well, a x n would give us one. So that element in the a x n place would be one. So let's do a little bit of practice with that. We can reference, just like we I just talked about, we can reference these. The second row, third column, first matrix, well, here that would be N. I'll go backwards here. 
third column would be Z, second row would be B, and we get back a six. Well, does that make sense? Let's go back and look. Yes, right there. We're in the N, the Z, and the B. We can just pull out a particular column. So if we want to pull out the Y column, remember we have to, if we're going to use the dimension name, we have to surround it in quotation marks and we pull that out. Notice there's a comma on either side because there's a dimension here, the first dimension. Then we go to the second, which we're naming. Then the third is also left. And so that's going to pull out 3, 9, 4, 10. Let's make sure we understand why that's happening. So what is Y? Here's Y, 3, 4. Here's the other dimension Y. 9, 10. Then we're going to pull out the first row. So how do we get that first row? Um, let's go back and trace this and see. So notice first row is going to be the elements 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. And here we get them 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, printed out um, differently than we may be anticipated, but it is those correct elements. Then we can get the first and second rows, so that would be both A and B, but then just dimension M. So that's going to pull out, notice, oh, I went the wrong way, this entire matrix. So can you think of another way that you could have just gotten that? We really don't need that one too, right? Because there's only two dimensions in that first. So we could have left that off and gotten the same result. Okay, again with arrays, we can use apply. And apply will go across the different margins of your array. There's some other ones that are useful though too. We can transpose an array by permuting its dimensions. This just means um, um, reconfiguring how its dimensions are ordered and so we might work out an example like that. We can obtain the dimensions of the array which I often need reminding so this is a very useful function. We can also get back its name, the dimension names if need be. Okay last slide. Um, if we apply the, if we use the apply function in more than one dimension like for an array like this, um, the one is still the rows, the two is still the columns, and now three is for across the matrices. So notice here, if we apply and use sums across our columns on W, it's going to go across and get the X column, the Y column, and the Z column sum. So going back to here, so all of these numbers summed in the X column, all of these in the Y, all of these in the Z. But similarly, we could do something like go across the rows and the matrices, then we just get back um, everything that is summed across um, each row and matrix. So for example, A and N, well, let's go back and look how they got that nine. Well, across A, and then here's the nth dimension, the sum across that A for the entire nth dimension is 1 plus 3 plus 5, which gives you 9, and so on. So make sure you understand, um, in the practice after this section, we're going we're gonna to apply a lot of these apply functions and make sure that we understand them.